I've been asked multiple times to create videos explaining how to use Wireshark. Now I believe in creating content that's very practical. If you wanna follow along and try this yourself, make sure that you've got Wireshark installed. If you haven't, use the link below this video to watch a video where I show you how to install Wireshark and get started. But if you've already got Wireshark installed, use the link below this video and download the pcapng file that I've created. It's actually the file that I'm using in this video. Now, if you're interested in learning more about Wireshark, if you're interested in learning tips and tricks, consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. Consider enabling notifications. So click on the bell so that you get notified when I post a new video showing you how to use Wireshark to troubleshoot, to hack, and to better implement networks. In Wireshark, you may sometimes want to have different preferences for different situations. So as an example, if you're working with OSPF, you may want to set your preferences one way, but if you're troubleshooting EIGRP, you may want to use a different set of preferences. Or if you're troubleshooting UDP, TCP, various protocols or different customer scenarios, you may want to use different preferences. Now in Wireshark, you can do that by using profiles. What I'll do in this topology is start a Wireshark capture here. And once again, you can do something similar by downloading the Wireshark capture attached to this course. So if you wanna follow along, then do that. Now on the bottom right of this Wireshark capture, and I'll make this a bit smaller, notice we have profile default, and there's some other profiles here. You can also go to edit in Wireshark and look at configuration profiles. That'll bring this menu up. I can do something similar by right clicking on profile and clicking manage profiles. And here's a menu. So I'll click plus and let's configure one called OSPF and click okay. Notice the profile here is OSPF. Notice how the zoom changed when I selected this profile. Whatever changes I make now are gonna be used on that profile. So as an example, if I go back to default, notice the zoom is different. Go back to OSPF, the zoom is different. But what's of more interest here is, for instance, doing a search for OSPF. So I'll filter for OSPF. I can see the protocol is OSPF, I can see the length, I can see hollow packet. But what I could do is make some changes. So a very simple change here would be to go to the OSPF header and select the OSPF area and then click apply as column. Notice we now have an area specified here. Notice the area is zero. If I went onto the switch in my topology, and just to remind you, that's what our topology looks like. What we're seeing at the moment are OSPF messages from this router, but what I'll do is configure the switch with OSPF as well, and I'll purposely do it wrong. So router OSPF one, network, I'll enable OSPF on all interfaces in area one, and then I'll go into VLAN one, no shut it, and give it an IP address in the same subnet as the current router. So do something like this. Give the switch a name. So show IP interface brief. This is the IP address configured on the switch. And notice we are already receiving OSPF messages saying that there's a mismatched area. But notice in Wireshark, I can see clearly that there's a difference in areas here. So just by visually looking now, I can see that the area numbers are different. I could, as an example, look at the authentication type. So what authentication is used? What is the authentication data? Notice if I change my profile back to the default profile, you don't see those columns. If I set it to OSPF again, notice I see those columns. So it's very, very easy to see that there's an area mismatch and you'll be able to see passwords as an example. So on router one, what I'll do is configure a password on gigabit zero zero. So interface gigabit zero zero, 
IP OSPF authentication. And I'm gonna specify the key as let's say Cisco. So that's the password that I've configured on the wire. And what I need to do actually is go into OSPF and say area zero authentication, enter to enable authentication. Notice the authentication was null before. Notice now we've got a simple password. Here we don't see a password. So let's specify this as a column and I'll make this a bit smaller. Notice straight away you can see the passwords in the output there. So you can see simple password is Cisco. So authentication data, let's remove that. There's the passwords shown very, very quickly in Wireshark. Again, if I change this profile back to the default, I wouldn't see that output. Change it back to OSPF, I can see that output very clearly in Wireshark. Let's create another profile. So I'll right click, go to Manage Profiles, and let's add one called EIGRP, and click OK. Notice the zoom is back to the default, so I'll make that a bit bigger again, just to make it easier to see this on the video. Maybe a bit too big, so let's make it slightly smaller. These columns are too large. But let's filter now for EIGRP, and I can open up the EIGRP protocol and do something very similar. So what am I looking for in the EIGRP output? Let's say autonomous system number. Apply as column, notice I can see straight away the AS number there. If I enabled EIGRP on the switch, so at the moment it's running on the router, not on the switch. This IP address is the router, but I'll enable EIGRP on the switch. So on the switch, conf t, router, eigrp, and let's set the autonomous system number to 200, and I'll enable eigrp on all interfaces. What we should see is that the AS number is displayed. So if you were troubleshooting eigrp or OSPF, this makes it very easy to see what's going on. Once again, I could simply specify OSPF. Let's change the protocol back to OSPF. We don't see authentication type, we don't see authentication data. Change this to OSPF. Notice we can see area number, area one there, a lot of adverts from area one, or advertisements from area one. There's an advertisement from area zero. Notice simple password is Cisco. We can see all of that clearly in the output here. Now that's just one option. You could change other preferences in Wireshark. So as an example, I've changed the columns here. What about fonts and colors? I could change the colors, I could change the layout. A whole bunch of things could be changed on a per profile basis. And you can simply change from one profile to the other by selecting them on the bottom right here. So profiles make it very easy to look for information in Wireshark. It's easier to keep specific types of profiles relating to specific protocols pre-configured rather than having to do them every time. So pre-configure your searches or your filters and then just load that profile.